On the first day of the week, at early dawn, the women came to the tomb, taking spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, 
You gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today's lesson from Colossians chapter 3. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Oh. 
Today's Gospel is taken from the 28th chapter of Matthew. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised as he said. Come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, greetings. And they came to him took hold of his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Easter will feel different this year. You know, if we were living in ordinary times, our celebration this week would be communal and it would be festive, and it would be well orchestrated. We'd wear our best clothes, we'd sit together in packed pews, and we'd listen to trumpet fanfares. We've tried to recreate some of that feeling as best we can in this video for today. But in ordinary times, we would have gathered together. Some of us would have gathered here in the garden before dawn to hear the story of our faith. In worship today, the Alleluias will be back. 
The Alleluia is returned to our worship after being put away at the beginning of Lent. Some of us would have stayed after church in the fellowship hall for hot cross buns. Some of us would have watched as the children searched for Easter eggs out here in the garden. We would enact all our traditions together, gathering as a family and as a community of faith to celebrate the, the best and the boldest news ever. The tomb is empty. Death is undone. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. The news has not changed, but the world around us has. Or at least the pain that always racks our world has been freshly uncovered today. This year, we are not gathering together in this season of Easter. Not at church. Maybe some of you not even able to gather as family. We will celebrate online as best we can. But the fear, the sorrow, the numbness, the shock that we feel in the face of the COVID-19 pandemic will stay with us. It will be a part of our worship experience this morning. And maybe it even mocks it a little. What does it mean, after all, to celebrate resurrection when people are dying by the thousands? What good does it do that the tomb is empty when body bags are in short supply, mortuaries are filled to capacity, and mourners can't gather to bury their dead? I don't know. I begin by saying that because it's the most truthful thing that I can say. I, I just don't know. I'm scared. I'm grieving. I'm bewildered. I'm struggling. Yes, I believe with all my heart that Christ is risen and that his rising was and is the most consequential event in the history of people. But still, I'm fumbling. There's so much that I want to know, but that I don't know. Don't we all feel the weight of that ambiguity just now? Yet, I think that in some ways, Easter will be much closer this year to what Easter was originally like when those women came to the tomb that early morning 2,000 years ago. For them, there was no glory and gusto. Instead, they peered into the tomb at dawn, and what they saw there was emptiness and gloom and confusion and contradiction and fear and doubt. No one began Easter morning back then dressed in their spring finery. And no one gathered with special instruments to sing praises because on Easter morning, the disciples, they were still in mourning. They were still lost and, and heartsick over a devastating loss. They were still trying to grapple with a breathtaking new reality that none of them had ever wanted or needed to experience. Sound familiar? For me, it's the Easter sunrise service, which comes a little bit closer to this reality of the original Easter morning. Sunday morning, without the pomp and circumstance of a traditional sanctuary worship. Of course, we still know the outcome, but out here, there is a hush in the air. There is a, a sense of, of humility as we gather in plainer clothes and in simpler surroundings. Because out here at sunrise, we're here to meet Jesus. N not in the sanctuary, but in a, a cemetery. Uh, among the tombs of our friends, and relatives who have gone to the resurrection themselves.
just like the, the women gathered in that cemetery so long ago. And I think that really is precisely the point this morning, that Jesus doesn't wait for the moment of triumph. Instead, in our lives, Jesus meets us at the midnight hour. He meets us in the darkness that comes before dawn. He meets us in the hopelessness of our lives. He meets us in the brokenness of our world. This year, especially maybe, but every year, that is good news. The gospel reading for today begins with an earthquake and an angel, an angel which recalls lightning and snow, and guards who faint at the sight of this blinding apparition. And then there's the message that is shared to Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. He's not here. He's not here. He is raised. Go, tell the others. And did you notice in the reading that though the angel tells the women not to be afraid, the two Marys run off and share the news with a mixture of fear and joy. Maybe you've been there before, afraid to believe that what you could not barely allow yourself to hope for had actually come to pass. Your pulse racing, your heart pounding, your stomach dropping, even as your heart fills with expectation. It doesn't say so in the text, but I imagine that the woman's fear only subsides when they actually meet Jesus, discovering for themselves that the angel's good news is really true. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the foundation of our faith. The good news that sin and death do not have the final word, that God overcomes all by his power. That is a powerful word of good news, in part because we do assemble as communities together to celebrate it. But even in this time of coronavirus, we're finding ways to gather from work across all of these physical barriers that separate us. Most importantly, we know that whether we gather in family units or, or whether we are by ourselves this morning, God's presence is not virtual. But God's presence is constant and it is abiding. Together we look forward to Jesus' victory expanding across the cosmos at the final resurrection when all are brought together in the new creation. And so, as many of us are separated this morning from our church buildings and from our friends in Christ, I take great solace in the knowledge that Jesus takes the onus to show up first. He doesn't wait until everyone is gathered together, but Jesus comes to the garden and appears to the women. The point I'm trying to make is that Jesus can't help himself but show up when people are looking for him. Jesus chose to appear to the women. Jesus chose to appear to a couple on the road to Emmaus. Jesus chose to show up on the beach to have breakfast with his disciples. And Jesus will show up later to a larger crowd of disciples in Galilee. Jesus just loved being around people, both before and after his death. Jesus purposefully mingled with people in his life and in his resurrected body. He ate with his friends and, and he allowed them to touch him. In my own life, clarity, hope, and healing come when I am willing to, to linger a while in the hard and lonely places of life when the usual platitudes fail and all of the easy answers 
are inadequate, Jesus comes. Jesus comes in the darkness. And sometimes it takes a long time for me to recognize him. Maybe he doesn't look like I expected him to look. He doesn't allow me to cling to all of my preconceived notions about what his coming is about. And then he disappears again, just as I was about to grab hold of him. But he comes. Nevertheless, and he calls my name, even when I am grief, especially when I am in grief. And in that instant, I recognize both myself and him. The Easter story begins with tears and grief, but it ends with great, great joy. Having encountered Jesus, Mary runs to tell her friends the good news, I have seen the Lord. She doesn't hesitate to bear witness to what she has seen and what she has heard, and even into this context into which she brings this message, which is a context of anxiety and exhaustion, trauma and disbelief. She knows that the disciples need to hear it. She knows that the world needs to hear it. And so she says it boldly and clearly and joyfully, without apology. And I'm here to tell you today that the world still needs to hear it, especially now as death breathes down our necks, as the future feels precarious, and as our worst fears seem to run wild. The grave is empty. The sorrow is not forever. And the same Jesus who conquered death is still here, still with us, still among us, wherever it is that we gather this morning. Yes, Easter will feel different this year. But even now, the angels accompany us in our times of darkness. Faith remains possible. Understanding will come. The voice of Jesus, of the risen Jesus, calls out our names. And the God who destroyed death is ever able to turn all of our tears and our grief into joy. All is not lost. Remember, we have seen him. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Now let us confess our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him, all things were made. For us, 
and for our salvation he came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not
Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and all places in praying for the church, for the world, and for all who are in need. O God of resurrection, from the very beginning, you give the church the gift of women as your witnesses, as preachers, teachers, and leaders. Open our ears to their proclamation. I have seen him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All your creation praises you. The earth hums and the seas pulse and the stars shine and the galaxies whirl in glorious harmonies to honor you. Let us hear and blend our voices in the song. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The countries of the world experience disunity and conflict. We set our minds on fear and greed rather than on your rule of justice and steadfast love. Build up all countries on your cornerstone of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Coronavirus is a disrespecter of border and political parties and ideologies. Good God, teach us compassion in these times of pain. Help us to rise above pettiness, selfishness, selfishness self-interest, and greed to be the people of your way, loving at all costs, forgiving beyond reason, bold in our proclamation of the faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We still weep with those who weep and mourn with those who mourn. Cradle the fearful, the suffering, and the dying assuring them of your loving presence. Grant your wisdom, knowledge, and skill to all leaders that this pandemic may come to an end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless first responders, doctors, nurses, caregivers, researchers who are on the front lines. Grant them your protection. Bless the farmers, the truck drivers, the stockers, the clerks, and all who continue to work every day that others may eat and have the essential things of life. Grant them your protection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Risen Lord, you went ahead of us into the grave and defeated the powers of evil. We remember those who have died. Inspire us to live our lives in this resurrection hope and draw us to you in our final days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
but you make of them an abundance, just as you do with our lives. Free us again at this table for service in your name. In the strength of the risen Christ, amen. The Lord be with you. the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene, and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea, and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body which is given for you do this for the remembrance of me and again after supper he took the cup when he had given thanks he gave it for all to drink saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin do this for the remembrance of me now let us pray together the words which our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Life-giving God, you have fed us with your word, and our hearts burn within us. Through this meal, you have opened us to your presence. Now send us forth to share the gifts of Easter with all in need. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Bless you now and forever.
risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.